Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Understanding performance and support. We're going to talk very quickly about how to test your usability, and then we'll have some time for questions and a bunch of resources that we're going to share out. So, who we are, so I'm Katie Riker. I'm a senior uh, UX designer at Red Hat. Just a technical manager at TripAdvisor. We're out in Needham, in case you guys are curious. And uh, we care about UX uh, as a UX designer and developer, but we're And we consumer UX goes way beyond that. And this being an open source conference, we wanted to talk about how the UX on the back end or the UX as an open source contributor is also just as important as the UX for the end user. Um, you know, open source software is collaborative. There's not necessarily someone steering the ship all the time unless a big We do a better job thinking about UX up front. We can make our projects better, uh, more usable, more contributors, more adoption. So, by being here and coming to a UX talk at a dev conference, we're actually making assumptions about you. We're going to address these right up front so you guys know where we're coming from and hopefully we've got something right about you. So, our first assumption is that you've got at least a
dive right into it. I think I should start. Dive right in. All right. Good stuff. All right. Uh, Can everyone hear me in the back? All right. All right. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Deepak Kaul, and I am a QE manager in Red Hat. And with me is Anuj, my colleague, who is a developer. And I'm just kidding. He's not here. His visa application did not go through. And that is why the John Cena joke in his name. All right. So, uh, I have been writing tests for a living uh, from last 13 years and during those 13 years I, I realized that uh, we the test automation developers uh, when we do things individually we, we don't uh, do things in a way which could have been done if we had done those things collectively like shared something with one another in the community of uh, test automation. And this is exactly what today's talk is based upon, the end-to-end -end test strategies for web apps using uh, common web components. All right, so uh, normally what happens is when, when we say test, it means different thing to different people. This is DevConf, there are, uh, I'm expecting there are people who are developers. Uh, when, when you say test to developers, it usually means a unit test or a, on an integration test, right? It's not an end-to-end -end test. So uh, Martin Fowler, who is a ThoughtWorks uh, Agile expert, he, he created this uh, pyramid of testing, right? So right at the bottom was the unit test, so which were fast and less expensive. And right at the top is the end-to-end -end test, which is slow because it runs in a browser for a web app and is not very reliable because so many moving components in it. So this talk particularly talks about uh, the end-to-end -end testing, the testing for a web app which you do while invoking a browser. Even though it is slow, but still very important because it is as close as you get to the actual user simulation, right? All right. So Selenium WebDriver, I, I don't want to give you the whole history of Selenium. So there were two projects, two open source projects, the Selenium project by Jason Higgins and then the WebDriver project which got merged. So it is actually uh, an API which you, with which uh, you can talk to a browser, right? To run an automated test in a browser, you need to modify the uh, DOM, right? You need to click on buttons, you need to enter the text in a text box, correct? And this is the, actually it's an interface, but the other, uh, the people, the browser vendors have written uh, APIs which are very browser specific like the Firefox driver or the IE driver or the Chrome driver which then you interact with and run your tests. All right, so how did this problem start? Uh, what happened was in pursuit of learning and innovation, uh, the developers, the modern web developers, uh, are, have been, you know, uh, using different kinds of UI components as well as frameworks. So within a weekend, there is a new JavaScript framework which is coming in the market. Right, there was Android, uh, there is React right now. So on the other hand, the Selenium community is not that strong to compete with such fast-moving front-end frameworks, right? Selenium itself has an API, let's say, to uh, work with the select component. So have you seen a pick list on a web page, right? So ideally, it should be an HTML select tag. Selenium in itself has an out-of-the-box select library to deal with that. It has methods to deal with that, like you click on it, you just give the locator of the select tag, you click on it, you can get the size of the list, you can click on an item by value or by index, and stuff like that, right? But 
there have been multiple other new frameworks which have their own versions of picklist right for example there is a chosen library by jquery and there is a react select which does not follow the same standard uh, which the select tag has right so in that case what uh, in that case there is a problem with the test automation developers uh, the selenium developers who write those tests they don't know what to do because there is no out of the box library by selenium so in that case they do hard coded clicks on uh, first the drop down and then select by visible text stuff like that right and the another thing is that uh, with uh, medium size to large organization what happens is people are using common components to make uh, to enable a consistency of ui in their web apps for example in red hat we mostly use the pattern fly are you aware of pattern fly pattern fly is a open source library of ui components which you can use like drop downs select boxes radio boxes stuff like that so you can straight away pull that and use in your web applications to maintain a consistency of, let's say you have uh, 20 different uh, web applications in your organization some uh, some payroll applications or maybe any other application inside your organizations or public facing to maintain that consistency of ui your brand you use similar components so what developers do is they fork those fork some other libraries of the ui components and make some changes and create their own library and then reuse it everywhere in all of these web applications or they, what they do is they straight away use some existing uh, components like the react select and this causes problems as i said there is selenium does not support they have a lot of so many web components right it's it, it's not a community which is moving as fast as the front end community so there is a problem let me now show you the uh, so my colleague who could not come here uh, due to the visa application created this demo app okay so these are three different picklists the first one is jquery chosen okay again a list of countries the second one is simple html select tag which is again a list of countries and third one is a react select library so if you are if you are testing an application if you are a front end tester or a e2e tester on an application which is using react select then you will probably have to uh, create your own library ui li testing library to work with the react select component so if i do an uh, if i open dev tools you will see that the react component is completely different because it's not a select tag right the first validation which selenium's out of the box select library makes is to check whether the html it is dealing with is a select tag so you cannot use the selenium select library here so you will have to create your own so our strategy in this case was because we were also using uh, our own component library right the developers were had created a component library so as a qe member my strategy was to test the component at source okay let's say there is a component library of five uh, picklist uh, two radio boxes text boxes text area stuff like that maybe date pickers right everything you need to build a web application you have your organization's component library so what should be the ideal step now is to create a simple web page a bare bone web page like this and feed it with hard coded json data like i have done it is just a list of countries right i don't need to follow business logic here this is just a test page so for the library i create a test page and i write my selenium library based on this test page you getting my point 
Any questions so far? All right. So once I have written my Selenium library for these, then I'll run some tests on it to make sure that at least this thing on the source passes. Then different teams which are using these components can use my test library as well instead of uh, inventing the wheel again and again. They can uh, use my test libraries to uh, in their test automation frameworks, right? So I'll I'll just show you an example. Okay, so these are three tests. Should I make it slightly larger? Okay. How about now? All right. So these are three different tests. The first one is the chosen demo for the pick list which uses the jQuery chosen library. Okay. Selenium does not provide anything to deal with this chosen pick list. So what did we do? We created a separate chosen library modeled typically on the actual Selenium select library. Okay. So it exposes methods like get options, select by index and select by value. And it depends on you how many methods you want to expose. But ideally these methods do the job. You just have to select let's say one country from the pick list. And the second one is the react select. Again there is no selenium library for react. So we created our own which is very similar to the chosen library. But uh, there is an existing library for HTML select. When a developer uses actual HTML tag to create a pick list, there is a Selenium library. So we did not need to create anything for that. Okay. So I have, uh, if you look at line 25, so I create an instance of the chosen library and select by index 4. So whatever option is on uh, index 4, it would get selected, right? And you can also select by visible text or value, right? So <coughs> I'll just go ahead and run them. You can see how it works, right? So the benefit of doing this is now any other test automation engineer in my organization who is using a React Select component, who is testing a React Select component, and there there can be multiple React Select components in one web app only. Okay, let's say we have a customer success web app in Red Hat and it has uh, six different React Select components. So that person, that test automation engineer does not have to create a new uh, pick list library now. He can reuse this. Plus, since the component is tested at the source itself, there are no chances of the test breakage due to the actual component developers changing something at the back end, right? If they change something, uh, if you look at this code, so it is searching elements, the list of elements by class, by class name option. Let's say tomorrow, the uh, developers of the core developers of react change 
it from option two, let's say Li, right? They can do it, right? They are the owners. So if we are not testing at the source itself, it would break all the 20 web applications in your organization. Not the web application itself, but their testing frameworks or testing or their tests, right? To avoid that, what we will do is we'll cre we create a sample page, put the component in it, put some hard-coded data in it, and test it on source. Then every test automation engineer who is part of the teams uh, working in different uh, web apps in your organization is uh, at least shielded from those breakages. The, uh, the thing with uh, E2E testing is that there are multiple chances of breakage, right? There is this browser and Selenium version incompatibility. There are other stuff. There is a lot of other stuff which can break it. So actual component level change breaking your test is something which you don't want, right? Any questions so far? All right. See, another benefit of testing the component at source is that uh, your test auto the purpose of testing is not just test automation, right? You have to find uh, corner cases you have to break the app stuff like that once uh, once uh, breakage of tests this problem goes out of mind of your QE then he can focus on probably 100 different things right all right any questions just um, this might be the wrong question to ask but what is the benefit of this over something like using um, jest testing you know like the node package that allows for things like snapshot snapshot testing and end-to-end -end testing on any JavaScript front-end framework I don't think jest does end-to-end -end testing you you need to have uh, let's say let's say you are testing react right for integration tests, you can use JEST. For end-to-end -end testing, you still need to use something which has WebDriver JS associated with it, either Nightwatch or WebDriver IO or the plain out-of-the-box uh, WebDriver JS. So until and unless there is Selenium in it, it won't open the browser and uh, manipulate the DOM. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? So yeah, um, I, I do uh, functional E2E testing on the Ceph dashboard. So hypothetically, for like a code coverage standpoint, how would, how would you be calculating that or anything of that sort through uh, this? Uh, See, process? code coverage with uh, with uh, front end tests is a tricky thing. So there is there is one tool called Jacoco, Java Code Coverage. So there is a plugin which you put in your repo and then you run your front end tests. So based on which paths you are taking while running your front-end test, it gives you some sort of code coverage, but that's not something to be a very, uh, so that's not something which is very reliable and promising, to be honest. So code coverage thing is mostly done on the unit test or an integration test level. Gotcha, thank you.
Alright then, thank you everyone. And uh, just to let you know that this, these, uh, both this app as well as these libraries. So if an, if any one of you is using React or Chosen in the, I know most of the Red Hat apps use uh, React as well as Chosen. The Red Hat customer portal uses Chosen drop downs. So if you are using any of these, so these things are on GitHub. Feel free to use them. Uh, I'll probably paste this in, paste the link in my presentation for you to uh, check. Alright, thank you.